What's up? I'm going to talk to you about Brobyte. What is Brobyte? And just start first with automation. What is automation? So basically anything that you do as a human with the computer, having the computer do it for you. And currently it's not very easy to write large automation programs, programs that do a whole bunch of things. So usually people tend to write programs that do simple things. And the reason that writing large automation programs is difficult is because it's a stochastic process. So everything that happens is uncertain. If you are looking for an image, you might not find it. You might find it in the wrong place. If you click on something, it might actually click. It might not click. It might do something strange. There might be a pop-up on the screen that you're not expecting. It's just everything is uncertain. This uncertainty, the stochastic nature of the automation problem is what makes it very difficult to create a large automation application. And the major problems, the major hurdles are, one, complexity. For your program to be robust, for it to do exactly what you want it to do, your application needs to become ex exceedingly complex. And two is the inability to test. So how do you test something when you don't know what its outputs are going to be, when you don't know what the outcome of its actions are going to be? Here's a simple process. We want to find an image A and click on it, and then we want to find an image B and drag it, and then we want to click on a point C. And this seems like a fairly simple process, and it is. The problem is, is that when you automate this, it's no longer such a simple process. And the reason is, is that it's stochastic. There's uncertainty on, at every step of that process. You might not find image A, you might not find image B, you might find image B and it might not drag correctly. And then there are external things that can happen. Your program can accidentally minimize the application you're controlling. You can have a pop-up appear from a different program. Or you can, by accident, hit the wrong button and delete the internet and replace it with a cow. How can you make your program more robust? Well, you can do things repeatedly. If an image isn't found, you can look for it a few times. That's good. You can also create different paths to your goal. So at your start point, to get to your goal, we have this one process, but there's probably other processes. And it's a good idea to add those processes. The problem with that is that it adds complexity to your program. And in fact, it adds complexity exponentially given the number of steps that you have in your initial process. This happens because when you're finished with one step, those additional paths that you created, they're no longer applicable. And from that new starting point, you need to create new paths. And every time you create a new path, to make sure that that path is also robust, you might have to add additional code to that, create additional paths for that to succeed. So it adds a lot more complexity. What's key to simplifying the growing complexity of these processes is the idea that at different points throughout the processes, there will be environments that repeat themselves. In Brobyte, unique environments are defined as a state. Now, a state in Brobyte is a collection of objects that are related to each other in some way. A robot state doesn't have a formal definition of what that relation is, but it usually has to do with space and time. They're usually in the same area, and they're usually they're all there at the same time. Think about a drop-down menu. Before you drop down the menu, the menu objects or the menu items don't exist. And once you drop down the menu, those menu items are there. Now, you may have menu items that are hidden at that point. Any menu item that could appear when you drop down the menu, is part of that state. The one defining uh, aspect of a state is that any time an a action is taken on one of those objects, we expect the same result to occur. So obviously, it's a stochastic process, so we don't know what the actual result will be. But the expected result should be the same. And take the example here. 
It's a simple example of a state in a game where we are at an island and there are some images, there's three different images that we expect to appear in this description of the island that's at the right side of the screen. And there's also a state region at the top left and there's a state location at, in the middle left. The purpose of a state region might be a little more confusing. Remember that any time an action is taken on a state object, we get the same expected result. So before we're at, when we're not at an island, we don't expect to have text in the top left of the screen. And when we're at an island, we expect to have text. So when we run a get text operation on that state region, we expect to get the name and type of that island in text within that region. The other part to this method of reducing complexity is the idea of a state transition. A state transition has one purpose, that is to go from one state to another state. And it has no objects associated with it. A state, in contrast, has no methods associated with it. It has only objects. And this separation allows us, it gives us a very clear structure in the program in that our states and our state transitions are, are divine, defined separately and they do not overlap with each other. And in addition, our business logic is defined separately from both the states and the state transitions. States and state transitions are just a description of our environment that allows us to move within that environment and to reduce the complexity of that movement. This example is meant to be the same example as before, except that it's defined by our state structure. And everything we need is contained within the states and the state transitions that we defined. We no longer need to define new paths at every point in a along the way. We don't have this increasing mound of process spaghetti anymore. Everything that we need is included within the states and the state transitions we defined. And Brobot will find the paths for us. So at the beginning point, Brobot finds a few different paths. And we can see from the, these paths, because there's more than one path, that our program at this point is fairly robust. And then we move on. We are successful with the first step. We move on to state one. And those paths, the other paths that we had defined, that Brobot had selected for us, are no longer applicable. But we don't need to define new paths here as we did in the previous example. The structure is already there for Brobot to find new paths for us at this point, at this new starting point. And we also see that this new starting point is fairly robust because there are multiple paths to our goal. And at any point in our program, Brobot can find dynamically the paths that we need in order to reach our goal. Automation programs are traditionally tested by trial and error. That's a really bad method of testing, but that's what's done. And it's done for good reasons, because creating a simulation of your application in order to test your application would be more complex than writing your application itself. This is how I used to test my applications, my automation applications before Brobot. And this is what it looks like. No pointer exception. Huh? It stopped. What? I spelled the name wrong. I spelled the file name wrong. Oh. Unglaublich. Unglaublich. Pero por qué? Warum? Que hizo? Bavana me conan. Namaleko putonano. Great. Didn't read the text correctly. I guess I need to change the code to account for that and stop it. Pointer exception. Another no pointer exception. There it is. Testing by trial and error. It's not pretty. I don't recommend it.
Robot treats testing as part of its core functionality. It's integrated within the core functionality of Robot. It's not a separate unit such as a J unit framework or some other testing framework. Robot has wrapper functions that interact with the libraries that Robot uses. There are wrapper functions that wrap securely methods. And the rest of Robot, the higher level methods and classes, they don't know if an application is being mocked or not. They perform the same way in a mock scenario as in a real scenario. State objects in Robot can be created with histories. And these histories are our expectation of what happens if an action is performed on this object. So it's like saying in the past this object was searched for and it was found at this location. Or in the past, there was a get text operation run in this region and it found this string once. And in another occasion, it found a different string. And these match histories, what they do is they allow Robot to simulate actual execution through expected results. Take a very simple example of clicking on an image. Real execution means that we send the operation to Securely, which finds the image, and then, if it's found, clicks on it. An example of mocking that operation is returning a result based on the match histories. The results look the same. They're in the same format in real execution and in mocking. And the higher level methods and classes in Robot don't know if it's being mocked or if it's running a real execution. This is an example of mock output. It's similar to the output you get during real execution, and of course all output can be configured. Assertions are similar to assertions in testing frameworks like JUnit. The difference is, is that they are an integral part of Robot, similar to mocking. They run with your code, they don't run on your code. The difference is that mocking is only for operations that Brobach takes care of, things like um, moving from state to state, finding paths, performing actions, and stuff like that. Assertions can be used to test your business logic or anything else that you want to involve in your code. Hey, still there. I hope this was a gentle introduction to what Brobot is and to the problems it tries to solve. If you want more information, there's a documentation website that includes a tutorial in GitHub. You can also ask questions in Stack Overflow. I check that frequently. Plus, you can write to me directly in Brobot's Twitter account. Brobot is open source, and it's free. And it's built with care for researchers, for anybody writing automation software, for the entire AI community. Personally, I can't imagine writing automation software now without it, so I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find it useful. Have fun broboting, and try not to delete the internet. Oh.